Hello, I'm Stefan Hartmann. I'm a philosopher of science at LMU Munich, and I would like to talk about joint work with Ulrike Hahn. We are interested in how people learn an indicative conditional from a partially reliable information source. Now, there is already a lot of work on indicative conditionals in the philosophy and cognitive science literature. This literature focuses on two main topics. The first is the question, what is an indicative conditional? And what is its semantics? The second question is, how do people reason with conditionals? We are interested in another type of questions. There is much less work devoted to the question of how we change our beliefs when we encounter a conditional. And in particular, there is almost no work which examines how people change their beliefs once they hear an indicative conditional from a partially reliable information source. In a recent paper, Peter Collins and collaborators arrived at a number of stylized facts about this question. And they showed that none of the existing accounts of the semantics of conditionals is able to account for these stylized facts. The goal of this talk and the corresponding paper is to provide such an account. We would like to have an account which is normatively appealing and at the same time accounts for the stylized facts Collins and colleagues uh, found. Let me give you some background to start with. We assume that people represent their partial beliefs in terms of a probability distribution P over a set of propositions. Once people learn new information, they update their beliefs and arrive at a new probability distribution Q. For example, if they learn a proposition, then the new probability distribution Q is the old conditional probability distribution. This is also called the principle of conditionalization or simply base rule. Things get more complicated if people learn an indicative conditional. In this case, it's not clear anymore whether conditionalization can be applied because it's not clear whether it's possible to represent the conditional as a proposition. If one wants to represent the conditional as a proposition, then the material conditional, non-A or C, is a natural choice. In this case, one can then simply conditionalize on the material conditional. However, it's well known that there is a lot of evidence against representing a conditional by a material condition. So what can be done? One way out here is to adopt the so-called distance-based approach to, to, to Bayesianism, which assumes that people fix a certain constraint on the new probability distribution Q once they learn the conditional A implies C. And this constraint is simply the constraint that the conditional probability of C given A equals one. Of course, this constraint doesn't fully fix the new probability distribution Q. In order to find it, we apply a principle called conservativity and minimize the distance between the new probability distribution Q and the old probability distribution P, taking the constraint into account. Technically, this is done by using so-called F divergencies, but we do not have to go into the details here. What matters is that all F divergencies yield the same result if the conditional is strict, that is, if there are no exceptions to the rule, and if the constraint which is adopted is Q of C given A equals to one. Interestingly, one also finds that this new probability distribution Q is the same as the one one obtains if 
on simply conditions on the corresponding material conditional. However, both procedures, that is conditioning on the material conditional and applying the distance-based approach to Bayesianism cannot be used if the information source is only partially reliable. These approaches presuppose that the information source is perfectly reliable. A possible way out here is to set the constraint Q of C given A to some number smaller than one, if one learns the indicative conditional if A then C from some partially reliable information source and then make sure that P prime is some function of the reliability of the source. So for example, if the source is fully reliable, that is if the reliability parameter is equal to one, then P prime is equal to one. And if the reliability is somehow smaller than one, then P prime is also smaller than one. In this case, all agents who start with the same prior probability distribution and set Q of C given A to the same value P prime will arrive at the same probability distribution Q. Now, unfortunately, it turns out that this is not what one finds experimentally. It turns out that one finds experimentally that Q of A and Q of C still depend explicitly on the reliability parameter R. This is one of the stylized facts that a proper account of learning indicative conditionals from a partially reliable information source has to explain. But there is more stylized facts that we should account for. First, it turns out that people change their beliefs more if the conditional is uttered by a source to which they attribute a high degree of reliability. In particular, they do not change their probability distribution at all if they consider the source to be totally unreliable. They simply stick to their prior probability distribution in this case. Second, one finds that the conditional probability of C given A always increases. And one finds that the new probability of A may be larger or smaller than the old probability of A. And that depends on the context. Here is an example. Imagine that you believe that today will be a fine and sunny day. But as you prepare to leave your home, someone tells you if it rains today, then you'll get wet. Think about this and may then raise your belief in the probability of rain as a result of the information you received. Q of C finally may also be larger or smaller than P of C, depending on the context. So let's see how we can explain these stylized facts. To do so, I'll show you two models. The first is called the baseline model, and the second model is called the extended model, which we construct because of some problems with the baseline model, which I present first. So here it is. We assume the following. If the source is totally unreliable, then the agent simply does not change her probability distribution. So Q equals to P. If the source is fully reliable, on the other hand, then Q follows from the distance-based approach or from updating on the corresponding material conditional as I just explained. For all values of the reliability parameter in between, zero and one, we simply interpolate between the two extreme cases. That is Q is equal to R times the probability distribution one obtains if the source is fully reliable plus one minus R times the probability distribution one obtains if the agent is fully unreliable. If one uses this recipe, then one arrives at the following conclusions. 
one finds that the probability of the antecedent always decreases and the probability of the consequent always increases. And this, if you remember, contradicts the experimental findings I mentioned on a previous slide. So the baseline model is not good enough to account for our experimental findings. We have to refine it, we have to add to it. To motivate, motivate our extension, I start with the following little story. A friend tells you, totally unexpected to you, that if there is an earthquake, then there will be a considerable amount of air pollution in the area. You are surprised by this remark. On the one hand, you find it plausible as an earthquake will probably cause air pollution. At the same time, you do not expect an earthquake at all. And so your prior of it is rather low. But why does your friend mention an earthquake? Does she have special information which you do not have? There must be a reason why your friend mentions the earthquake. Pondering the issue, you increase the probability of the antecedent. Let's now try to understand what's going on in this story and formalize it. It's important to note that we assume that the agent does not only have beliefs about the antecedent and the consequent of the conditional, but that she also believes that things are somehow normal and unsurprising. So for example, in the present case, earthquakes and the like are really unlikely in the area we live in. So let's assume or take or denote the corresponding propositional variable by n. This additional propositional variable has the values n, things are normal, and non-n, things are not normal. In a first step, we assume that an agent who learns this indicative conditional from partially reliable information source lowers the probability of n as a consequence of learning the condition. And if one then applies Jeffrey conditionalization, one finds that Q of A is greater than P of A. So the probability of the antecedent goes up. And that's in line with our intuitions about the earthquake example. Analogously, if the agent raises the probability of n as a result of learning the conditional, then we find that Q of A is smaller than P of A. Let's now put everything together that we have done so far. Once the partially reliable information source utters the conditional, the agent does three things. First, she assigns a reliability to the source. Second, she changes the probability of the normality variable. And finally, she sets the conditional probability of C given N equal to one. Now, using the Bayesian network above, which is plausible, for this situation and minimizing an F divergence between Q and P, one finds that the difference between the new and the old probability of the antecedent as well as of the consequence is a linear function of R. It increases linearly with the reliability of the source. That is, if the reliability of the source is zero, then Q of A equals P of A. And if the reliability of the source is one, then the distance between Q of A and P of A has a maximum. The differences on the right-hand side can be smaller or larger than zero, depending on whether the probability of n decreases or increases. That, that's important to note because that accounts for two of our stylized facts, namely that Q of A can be smaller or larger than P of A, and that Q of C can be smaller or larger than P of C. Let me now come to a 
thought outlook and to finish this talk. Learning an indicative conditional from testimony is a neglected problem in the psychology of reasoning. What I've done here is I have provided a simple and powerful probabilistic account that explains the stylized facts that Colin and colleagues um, discovered. Finally, it turns out that more work needs to be done to relate our account to empirical data and also to justify its normative foundations. Thanks very much for your attention.